going? Our viewership's through the roof. Elvis is charged! You lost! Troy had gone on a bit of a power trip by this point, trying to suck Tyrene's power dry in order to maintain his power. Elpis was under his thumb, and things were not exactly looking great. However, while this battle is long and you have to dodge a lot of projectiles if you want to stay in the game, I was able to beat him without too much trouble or frustration. With the bad guys down, Ava went to examine the bodies. It's at this point that we find out why she was so important this whole time. So anyway, long story short, Ava is indeed a siren. There are a whole lot of those at this point. She takes back Maya's power from Troy. Now they can finally open the Great Vault, which is a really good thing because, of course, we're Vault Hunters, so that's kind of what we do. But, of course, that would be way too easy, and Tyrene is not nearly as dead as we thought she was, so now she's back and she's really angry because she just killed off her brother. Then she smashes some ruins down on our heroes. Everyone seems pretty dead. Tyrene goes and makes another viral video with Troy's dead body, so that's a thing. And uh, then the game ends, so yep, see you on Borderlands 4, right? Yeah, good game, but no, of course we're going to continue this. No, that we're not going to do that. Well, I mean, wouldn't it have been hilarious if we just waited till the next game to tell you what happened? Anyway, as you probably figured out, sirens have siren powers and can use those siren powers to protect them against things like rubble. The ground starts to shake, and a strange voice comes on over the radio. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? What have you done? The universe is doomed! <laughs> While that does sound important, I do need to collect all this loot first. Yet, make sure we collect all of this before we figure out how to save the universe. Good. This is Moe's copy. Huh? How did you get this? No, you know what? It doesn't matter. This is Typhon de Leon. Listen up. You see that crazy beam of light shooting through the sky? Pretty cool, right? Well, that means the Great Vault is opening. And if it does, say goodbye to Pandora. So get your case to the Necro de Feo now. Oh, okay, so another long story short turns out Pandora itself is the Great Vault, and we actually don't want to open that because the entire planet would go kaboom if we tried. Also, the Destroyer is still alive, and Tyrene wants to wake it up. So to prevent that from happening, we have to seek out the first Vault Hunter, Typhon de Leon, on the Iridian homeworld of Necrotefeo. But I guess while we're here, there is a vault, so we might as well open that up, see what's inside, right? Inside the vault, we finally find the artifact we need in order to read all those writings that have been on the walls. Turns out the legendary planet of Necrotefeo that seemed so difficult to find all these years was actually right here on my planetary selection, so that's handy. So this is the Iridian homeworld, after all this time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a fixer-upper, but... I mean, I do have a pretty nice view from here. The active energy volcano looks lovely this time of year. Soon after landing, I thought to check the map, at which point I realized just how big this new area is. Oh yes, we were nowhere close to the end of the game. Thank you for your help in testing our private early access augmented reality game, Destroyer of Worlds. I'm Mickey Tricks, the marketing exploitation director. I feel like it's worth highlighting this one side mission that you go on, which basically pokes fun at early access games and microtransactions. Stop them, hero! There we go! Onward to adventure! Please, hero! I need those crystals! Oops! That's not supposed to happen. And the objective is bugging out, too. Wow, that is a lot of crystals to fetch. Oh well, better get to it! Oh hey! We got a solution for our little bug problem! Would you like to purchase a brand new Ascendant Energy Pack of 90 Lactosh Crystals to speed up your progress? So convenient! Shoot your selection now! Thank you for your purchase! Looks like it's taking a while to penetrate Ragnagov's interdimensional hide, huh? But it's okay, we just added an armor shadow perk to the in-game store, which will break his natural armor! Because we're just super helpful like that! Care to buy it? Of course you do! Thank you for playing!
Destroyer of Worlds will be available for public early access any day now. And with all the money we've made from these super convenient microtransactions, we will definitely finish the game. Promise! Yeah, that was definitely a highlight of the early Necrotefeo game. What took you so long, Vault Hunter? And now it's finally time to meet the legend that is Typhon de Leon. You were expecting someone less handsome? He did not look like the posters. So the upshot here is that there is another vault here on Necrotefeo, but you need four vault keys in order to access it. We already have the ones from Eden 6, Pandora, and Promethea, but we need the one from here. Problem is, Malawan got here before you did, because now everybody knows where this place is, and you have to wade through a whole bunch of them in order to get that particular vault key. Luckily, this is a really good way to level up. Did a little ghost busting, turned my cyclone into a light cycle, found another one of those racks with stacks on stacks, stopped the planet from vibrating to pieces, and did some backtracking to previous planets because I can finally read these damn things, so I'm gonna take the opportunity. I wonder if they know I'm under here. Oh, and in my travels, I finally got some real context to what the heck was even happening in the first game. All prisoners must be fed. Even the Destroyer. The Iridians devised of a feeding slot that calls wayward souls to open it every 200 years. A cruel surprise for those that open this false vault. But in exchange, the small morsel will keep the Destroyer sedate over the eons. In any case, the victims will not be in pain for long. Nice to know Vault Hunters are so expendable. While doing my backtracking, I found out that Claptrap had a very special mission for me back on Pandora. It was his final Claps List mission, which actually surprised me because I don't actually remember doing any Claps List missions for him before this. Maybe I just tried to block them out. This house has a ramp? Nice! Screw stairs! Our client's name is Baby. Let's see if she's home. All you have to do is dance with her, then I'll get all the money, and I'll pay you what you deserve, which is hardly anything. However, the Baby Dancer mission is surprisingly one of the most heartfelt missions in the game and possibly series. Y'all are too late, okay? Posted that ad years ago. I've been living alone for a while and wanted someone to take me out dancing. But y'all are just too damn late, okay? If you want that money, then dance, recruit. Dance! So I tried my hardest to actually do my previous dance moves that I tried out. Wow, that was terrible. Maybe I was wrong. I can't dance anymore. Not on these wheels. What? Wheels are just fine for dancing, baby. In fact, they're even better. And then something magical happened. Claptrap did a genuinely good, useful thing. I know, right? I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm fine. While deciphering all those Iridian relics around the universe, I was able to uncover these Proving Ground challenges and thought I might as well try one out before we continued the story. Trials do live up to their name and are often very trying, but it was a really good way to get to level 43. These trials are all very similar, having done most of them now, they're mostly defined by the kinds of enemies that you fight in a few different arenas, and then the boss that you deal with at the end. In this particular case, it was the Skag of Survival. The nice thing is that the Overseer gives you a sweet chest at the end of each trial, full of... okay gear? Hey, Mr. Torg here! Straight talk, chump! You blew up a hundred guys using Torg tech! Those are rookie numbers! At Torg, we call that a slow Tuesday! But I believe in you! That's why I'm giving you a new gun with more explosion potential! My grandma thinks you new Vault Hunters are lazy entitled ingrates who want participation awards for everything and that you couldn't explode the broad side of a bomb factory! She's from a different time! Take this gun and prove her endearingly anachronistic ass wrong! 
Motivation! That's, uh, how I imagine it in my head. Mm. Uh, yeah, back on Necrotifeo, uh, Tannis had her fangirl moment. Vault Hunter, if you get the chance, please get Typhon de Leon's autograph for me, and a lock of his hair, for research purposes. The brother of that boss that I had completely forgotten tried to take revenge for his brother, killed him too, running theme, and learned a little bit more about Typhon and his family. Wait, you've got kids, Typhon? Yeah. Two of them. The boy, he got sick all the time. And my daughter talked circles around me. Only time they'd sit still was to hear about my adventures. Killing monsters, opening vaults, being a hero. They couldn't get enough. I filled their heads with all sorts of stories. Even told them about the great vault. <laughs> that was a mistake. A story can be a dangerous thing in the wrong hands. Oh. Oh no. So it was at that moment that I realized what was actually going on, and that Typhon must be Tyrene and Troy's father, and that's why they were going out looking for the vault. And I got so distracted that I accidentally blew myself up. I took down Zero's last target of opportunity. Fun fact, apparently only 8% of players have done that. So there's an accomplishment. Then I fell through a floor. The destroyer is almost here, and when I consume it, I'm gonna be a god! I know you're listening, Dad. Are you proud of your little girl? Tyrene? Starlight? Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Way you ahead of you, Lilith. You weren't gonna tell them, were you, Dad? Oops. <laughs> well, Vault Thief, guess who taught us everything we needed to know to take this galaxy apart, piece by piece? Yep. Typhon de Leon, the first vault hunter. I, I oh, figured Dad, this by the way, out Troy's already. dead. Your friend there killed him, so have oh, fun with that. Right. Vault hunter, the guardians know you're here. <clears throat> Fight him off. We'll talk after. That's gonna be an awkward conversation. Typhon led me to the last okay. vault key, and we got a little bit more De Leon family history. Sirens! Whoop! The rarest thing in the universe, and there were two of them right in our arms. The only way to keep them safe was to stay here forever. But that didn't work out so well. I might have been a first-rate adventurer, but I was a third-rate pops. The third-rate pops then gave me license to take out his kids. Troy and Tyrene, my kids, well, they became monsters. No other way to say it. And you're a vault hunter. You kill monsters. Simple as that. I crossed some streams because Ghostbusters taught me nothing. Siphon handed me his Iridian Fabricator, so now I can make handcrafted random loot in the comfort of my spaceship. With all of Zero's targets of opportunity dead, he gave me this pretty sweet Gatling sniper rifle. <laughs> Where's Moxie going? Who's she talking to? The new Siren crew powered up the last vault key. You got this, Tannis. And I am totally not going to snoop around your lab for Iridian stuff while you're gone. I made an abomination, and killed the abomination with my new sniper rifle. Everyone agreed that was worth leveling up. Toyed around with my Iron Bear weapon loadout. Used my automatic sniper rifle to make the Iridians regret all of their life decisions. Went off the beaten path in search of special chests. And could finally head to the Pyre of Stars, our final area before the end. Got over encumbered, again. Checked out my adorable baby toets. Aren't you so cute? Yes, you are. Fought for my life three times in quick succession until I just couldn't anymore. Found out how crazy Tyreen truly had become. Now I'm gonna devour every last star in the universe one by one. Until nothing shines but me. And watched as this unfolding family drama turned inevitably tragic. Sorry, Starlight. Boy, the holidays are going to be rough this year. Just promise me something. Don't be the last Vault Hunters. With as much money as this game made, no, we definitely won't be. It was finally that time. Tannis opened a portal, and it was off to the Destroyer's Rift. 
But as usual, I needed to do a little bit of housekeeping before I went there. Having found all of the dead claptraps, Veronica gave me a sweet new gun, which was actually an exact copy of the gun that I had already gotten, because I, I think she gave it to me and then sent it to. Popped by to watch the inevitable conclusion to this one-sided romance. We were supposed to be together! Keep dreaming, Scrappy! Now that Claptrap was suitably devastated, that could only mean one thing. Time to leave as fast as possible and finish the game. Tyrene, in true Borderlands villain fashion, completes her ultimate goal and finally merges with the Destroyer to become- Wow. Okay. That's- that's what you were going for this whole time, huh? Alright. I'm gonna just fast forward to the Tyrene boss fight because the most annoying part was actually trying to climb onto her back periodically, sort of Shadow of the Colossus style. Uh, but besides that, mostly just dodging projectiles was the biggest thing. Not too big a deal, actually. With Tyrene finally defeated, Lilith could get her Firehawk powers back. After basically not having them for the majority of the game. And finally, we had one more vault to explore before we wrap this up. At which point I got the Iridian Ascensionator, which accesses Mayhem Mode. Just a quick tip right here though, Mayhem Mode level 3 is practically unplayable. It's just ridiculous. I wasn't even a match for this stupid Elvis impersonator I met earlier. Mayhem 1 though, not bad. Not bad. Even though Troy and Tyrene were gone, there was still one big problem. Elpis was still on a collision course with Pandora, and that was bound to end badly for everybody. The Great Vault was still opening, and there was really nothing that they could do about it. Or is there? Run towards the fire. Sanctuary is yours, Ava. Why? Be ready. What does Lilith think she's doing? Closing the Great Vault. She's saving Pandora. Yes, no sooner did Lilith get her powers back than she had to use them to do a self-sacrifice and stop Pandora from being destroyed. She's the Firehawk. Actually, this makes total sense, because having a Vault Hunter be the one to actually close a vault seems poetic, and knowing that Lilith was able to go out on her own terms, unlike so many before her, is pretty great. She's lighting the way. Roll the Alicia Keys song and the end credits. But no, that's not really the end, is it? Lilith had left me a surprise in her room, which I took. Didn't really use, but I did take it. And there was so much left to do. Crew challenges I hadn't completed. Mayhem modes to experience. Again, try to avoid three, unless you're really confident in your abilities. Other trials to undertake. And near endless guardian ranks that I could pick up. Now at level 45, I figured I'd open another golden chest. Not a lot of great stuff here, but still. I realized that farming Gigamine seems to have pretty good returns. And kept revisiting some old areas to try and get 100% completion in them, at which point I hit level 46. So yeah, that was basically where the end of the story occurred. But I did keep going till level 50, and so when we come back on the last episode, I'm going to just take you through some of the stuff I found out, some of the stuff I learned, and uh, generally what I liked and didn't like about the game altogether.